Hello everyone, Chris Clamp here again and welcome back to my studio. For those of you that are new to the channel, let me introduce myself briefly. My name is Chris Clamp and I'm an oil painter. I used to work at a high-end commercial art gallery for 15 years, so I often like to say I'm a bit of an art world insider. I picked up a lot of tips and tricks during my time working at this art gallery, and I've used those to help me navigate the art market myself, and I would like to share a lot of that information with you through this channel. So if you haven't already, please subscribe and stay tuned to what's coming next. So during my time working at this art gallery, I used to love the conversations I would have with the various audience members that would come in and look at the exhibitions. Often, many of the visitors would be collectors, it would be local artists, art students, or even people that have never been in an art gallery before. Everyone that came in the gallery often had a very interesting story to share, and they also had very good questions about what is an art gallery? What is that painting over there? What is this medium? And I was always excited to help them understand a bit more about the process and what they're looking at. One question that would often come up among art students and some of the local artists was, how do you find your style? Many artists are somewhat preoccupied with that idea. You see artists that are sharing their works on Instagram or an artist that's sharing their work in a gallery or a museum and you compare yourself to that artist. You're wondering how they discovered that style or how they achieved this level of notoriety with what they're doing. And that is a very difficult nut to crack. However, I would try to tackle things in the most simplest of terms. When we're essentially talking about style, we're essentially talking about how you make your mark. One thing I like to compare this to is the idea of handwriting or signing your name. When we were young, we probably experimented with various ways that we would draw letters and how we would write our name and sign our name even on a piece of paper. There were many people in my classroom setting that had lovely handwriting, and I often wish that I could write like them. I would emulate various letters. Some people like to draw a T with a curl at the bottom. Some people like to draw a T very straight. Some people wrote in all caps. And as I was trying to find my identity as a very young person, I experimented with handwriting and how I wanted to share my identity through my handwritten note. As I grew a little older, I started to experiment with how I would sign my name when I would turn in a term paper or, or whatever. And it, it, that's a whole other series of questions. Do you sign it all in cursive? Do you sign it with your full name or initial or, or whatever? And there's so many ways you could come at this. At some point, what happened is I just gave up, I guess. I stopped trying. I, I don't know when or if something caused that, but I just know that at some point it was no longer important. I was writing the way that I wrote and I signed my name the way I signed my name. And many of you can probably relate to that. Many of you probably just quickly jot a note or sign something without any thought. But if you start to go back, in time a little bit, you might understand a little bit more of how you came to make your mark. Now, that is what I mean by making a mark. It's something that, that, that you don't even think about. You, ju you just do it. Whenever you're making a note or signing your name, you don't even think about it. You just apply the pen or pencil to the paper and make your mark. And that is something that is so beautiful and unique to all of us. All of us are making these marks without really giving it any thought. That makes it so personal and unique. And that is your style. 
Many years ago, I was fortunate enough to attend an artist lecture with Chuck Close in Atlanta, Georgia. Chuck Close was having an exhibition at the High Museum of Art in Atlanta, and there was an evening in which he was giving a lecture alongside of one of the curators of the exhibition. It was a fabulous conversation and one that I'll remember until the end of my days. But he said something that is very relevant to this idea of mark making and style. He was telling the story in which he was working on a very large woodblock print. Now, those of you that do not know this artist, Chuck Close, let me just clue you in on this one fact. Chuck Close was disabled. He actually had a form of paralysis in which he couldn't really use his legs or his limbs that much. I mean, he could, like he painted and he got around in a chair and, and, and everything, but small motor movements like drawing where you it's all in your wrist in a way, he could not do that. He could paint with a brush attached to his hand holding it in place and using his arm he could make his marks but not the small things like the wrist work so i described that to say when he was working on a large woodblock print a team of artisans would be utilized to carve this block he described in this process that he realized that everyone was going to make their mark in a personal and unique way regardless if this person was trying to work in a very formulaic manner. So to counteract this, he said every 10 minutes he had a bell go off on a timer and every artist had to rotate to a different area of this large woodblock print in which they were working. By doing this, it now evens out the carving it becomes more uniform and you do not see a different hand in a different place. I mean, imagine that. Imagine if there were four artists working on this large woodblock print and each of them were carving a corner until they met in the middle. Each quadrant would look like it was carved by a different person because it was carved by a different person and it would just look awful, honestly. That story is so important because it, if you think about it, you realize how the idea of mark making is so innate and so personal that you can't do anything to stop it. Now, one last thing I'll say about Chuck Close is his body of work, the subject matter, are portraits, they're heads. They're essentially portraits of fellow artists and himself. But it's what he does with the marks that made them unique, that gave them his style. If you don't know his work, you must look it up and then you'll understand how he used his disability and overcame it to create these works of art that are so him and so unique and so powerful. Now, I know that when artists are asking about style, they might be asking about something a bit more nebulous, like subject matter or technique. And that's something that is also personal. And that is also something that might find you as the artist as well. When I was a young artist, I had the idea that I was going to be this expressive, figurative painter, painting large canvases with figures and expressive movements and uh, bold brushwork and everything. And I even tried to work like that for a long time. It felt fine, but it also never quite clicked with me, but I was going through the motions. I was seeing what other artists were doing in art magazines and kind of replicating that a little bit. It wasn't until I saw an exhibition at a gallery by another artist this artist named Stephen Brown, then I realized that I needed to put the brakes on what I was doing and re-examine my focus. These paintings of Stephen's were so different than anything I was really looking at at the time. But for some reason, 
they really spoke to me. When I was a child, my grandfather collected all sorts of odd objects from old tools and toys, and these things really left an impression on me when I was younger. Now, seeing these paintings of Stevens, which were these small still life paintings, there was something different. There was something about it that was much more personal to me and very spiritual even. I loved how he painted. I loved the sensitivity of it. And for some reason, it told me that I needed to move myself in a different direction. Now, when I saw Stephen's work, I wasn't necessarily thinking, oh, I want to copy this guy. I want to emulate his style. There was just something about the style, something about his work that really hit me hard and made me realize that I was doing something that wasn't exactly me. There was something about his work that unlocked a part of myself that I'd been looking for. So with that in mind, it goes back to what I was saying a few moments ago, that your style will find you. Often enough, things that we're looking for are in front of us the whole time. We just have to cut the clutter to find it, to actually see it. We have to remove all the noise, and then what is left is what we have been looking for this whole time, and it's been right there. That is your style. So when you're in the studio next time, take the time to just listen, meditate, and go inside of yourself, and you will find what you're looking for. Keep making your marks. Keep exploring the mark. Keep making them stronger and more confidently to the point where you are no longer even thinking. The paintings just flow out of you. Then you have your style. Your style finds you. When you stop looking, that is when you find it. I know this topic is a little bit more nebulous than some of our others, but I think this is something that is very important for us all to keep in mind. We're trying to make the best art we possibly can, and sometimes to do that, we just have to stop looking at what's outside of ourselves and start looking at what's inside of ourselves and get to work. I hope this conversation has been enlightening and inspiring to you. If you find it helpful, please click the like button below. Leave a comment if you would like. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. I'm very excited about the community that we can build here on this channel. I want to help empower you all to become the best artist you can to produce some amazing artwork. So please stay tuned and happy painting, everyone. Thank you.